It's time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, maker of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored Longines. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. May I introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope? Mr. William Bradford Huey, author and analyst, and Mr. Hardy Burt, noted author and correspondent. Our distinguished guest for this evening is the Honorable Charles B. Brownson, United States Congressman from Indiana. Mr. Brownson, our viewers will probably remember that this is your second appearance on the chronoscope, that you are a Republican Congressman from Indianapolis, and that you are now one of the investigators in Congress. You are uh, chairman of a special subcommittee to investigate certain international operations of our government. And first of all, sir, uh, is it true that you've made a special study of monies that our government is spending in Germany now? Yes, it is, uh, Mr. Huey. Our jurisdiction concerns the State Department at all of its levels. Uh, we're charged with the responsibility of investigating the Department for Economy and Efficiency. And, and in that connection, we have gone in very carefully into the expenditure of counterpart funds in Germany. And is it fair to say, sir, that you're one of the members of Congress who is most interested in saving money and curtailing expenses? I would certainly uh, say that that is eminently fair. It's a tough fight, but we're all in it. Now, can you give our viewers some illustration, sir, of what you regard as the way that our money has been wasted in uh, State Department operations in Germany. Yes, I certainly can, Mr. Huey. Uh, as a matter of fact, just today, the Bureau of the Budget cut back a program as a result of our committee's investigation for a housing project in Germany from the original estimate of, 16, of $19 million. They cut it back 60% until they came out with a total of $7,655,000 for a saving of $11,345,000 on this one program alone. Has money been saved in Germany as a result of your investigations there, your committee's investigations in any, any other way? Uh, our <coughs> investigations to date have been on the Consular House, America House program in Germany and on the bond housing program. Now, these, the this time. is money that, that uh, is being spent to house <coughs> the American representatives in Germany. Is that correct? American and German representatives. And, is, the, it your, uh, and is it your contention that the Americans abroad have been uh, living a little bit too luxuriously? Yes, I think so. When you find a $3,000 a year stenographer working for the Department of State in Germany, occupying uh, an apartment that uh, uh, cost in the neighborhood of twenty-one or twenty-two thousand dollars to construct. I think it's a little bit expensive. Now you would say this is a waste of the taxpayers' money, when you, Congressman? Indirectly, yes, because we're spending these German Deutschmarks in counterpart funds. But uh, as we drain them out of the German economy, we put the taxpayers' money into the German economy, so it amounts to well, eventually a waste of. Well, money. how was it permitted in the first place that the taxpayers' money could be spent with such a lavish hand as you say it is in Germany and presumably in other parts of the world? That's a very good question, Mr. Burt. It wasn't actually permitted. The uh, bond housing program, for instance, was constructed completely without any authorization of the Congress of the United States at any time from the Deutschmarks on hand in the uh, possession of the High Commissioner of Germany. Can you give us some specific illustrations of what you regard as rather ridiculous expenditures <coughs> of taxpayers' money? Uh, yes, I, I certainly would like to. As I mentioned, uh, uh, in connection with the program. These apartments were running about $25,000 apiece before they were cut back by the Bureau of the Budget. Now that $25,000 was construction cost in Germany, but construction costs in Germany are only about 80% of what they are here, so that would amount to about $31,000 America construction costs. Where, well, uh, if, you, if you take a look at your apartment mm -hmm. houses here in New York City, Manhattan House, which is certainly a luxury apartment, only ran $30,000 a unit, so you can see how out of line these expenses were. What about were. the fittings of those apartments or the furnishings? They were uh, pretty lavish. Uh, the High Commissioner of Germany published this book in which he listed an inventory of all of the, fin of all the fittings in the apartment. I think you might be interested in the glassware in the dining room. 
We find, for instance, that depending on the size of the apartment, they either get six, eight, or 12 each of the following glasses. Water glasses, beer glasses, champagne glasses, cocktail glasses, liquor glasses, white wine glasses, red wine glasses, and sweet wine glasses. The question is, where do they get the wine, Congressman? <laughs> uh, that is much of a problem in Germany, I don't think. Uh, <laughs> as you the travel over there, Mr. Bird, I'm sure you realize. Now, Will I, the taxpayers pay for that, too? I hope not. Well, now, uh, you, you have, uh, you, as a result of your investigations, you say, the cost of these apartments have been cut down, and I assume the number of wine glasses, perhaps, has been the cut down. The cost of the apartments has been cut down. The total number of the apartments has been cut down. The America House Community Center program has been eliminated completely. We saved 3115000 there, and they've eliminated eight, eliminated eight principal officers' residences in eight German cities, which cut down another million, 188,000. Well, Congressman, this is one specific area of saving <coughs> that your committee has uh, been in working on. What other areas are there? There must be even larger areas than the few millions expended on housing and, uh, and bond. Well, there are tremendously larger areas. As a matter of fact, of course, we've spent between 30 and 100 billion dollars overseas since the end of World War II. Nobody can even tell the exact amount. Our staff is now working on a study which will indicate for the first time how much each of our executive departments has spent overseas since the end of World War II. We have 27 of our executive departments operating overseas, Mr. Burt, and 75 separate agencies are involved in the operation. Well, now Do you have any indication that these agencies are wasting money? Uh, we have certainly found that pattern wherever we've investigated the situation. We're starting out next week on TCA, the Technical Cooperation Agency, point four, and following that, we're going to look into the situation in regard to the, uh, to the MSA, the Mutual Security Well, Agency. Mr. Brownson, on our previous program, Mr. Averill Harriman uh, presented his views as a, as a Democratic critic of the administration. And he, one of the things that he very vigorously criticized was the proposed $5 billion cut in Air mm. Force expenditures. Now, do you support the administration in that? Do you, are you in favor of cutting the Air Force by that $5 billion? I certainly am. Uh, Mr. Huey, uh, we've seen a lot of Democrats <coughs> in Congress, most of them with big spending records. And I might say, in my opinion, Mr. Harriman was no slouch as a spender, right off to bloodless battle on the Democratic donkey in an effort to increase armed services expenditures. It just comes down to this, are you going to take President Truman's budget recommendation or are you going to take President Eisenhower's budget recommendation when it comes to the armed services. Of course, the aircraft industry, as you know, Congressman, says that they cannot plan ahead without having money appropriated for the purpose that they, of their, in other words, they've got to manufacture the plane from the blueprints today, <coughs> and they'll have to have the money three or four years from now. Well, Mr. Burt, the uh, Air Force is not exactly out of money. They, with the funds that would be appropriated and the funds they have on hand, they have some $40 billion, as a matter of fact, uh, to carry out their program. Now, if they get in a pinch, Congress is in session almost all the time, and a supplemental appropriation can certainly be gained quickly. One of the things that concerns many of our viewers is the fact that uh, President Eisenhower now expects to cut uh, the appropriations for atomic energy. Now, you have investigated that, and you've seen some of the uh, uh, blast out in Nevada. Do you think that uh, atomic energy can be cut safely? Yes, I think it can be cut safely. There are certain factors involved there that, that you can't discuss publicly, but I do believe that certain economies have been affected. How do, you know anything be about, how do you know anything about those factors, Congressman? From the briefings that we got out there at the time of the explosion. You went out there to see yes. the explosion. And it's, it's your belief that we can cut it's atomic energy It's my belief energy that we can safely cut atomic energy back to the extent that the President has indicated. After all, we're dealing with a man that won the European victories in World War II, and I'm a little inclined to go along with his judgment when it comes to the armament that this country needs. Congressman, you mentioned just now that uh, your committee is going to look into the Point Four program for the idea of seeing money is wasted. Are you opposed to the Point Four program? No, I've been highly in favor of the Point Four program. I was more in favor of it as it started out when it was a limited program under Dr. Bennett doing the agricultural <coughs> agent type of, pro of, uh, of approach to the situation providing technical assistance and not so much aid. Uh, some of the big spending people from the MSA and the Department of State have moved in to a certain extent, 
and I think the program has gotten quite a long ways away from its original concept. Who are these big spending people that you keep referring to? Are there any particular people in the government who are inclined to spend more than other people? Well, are? I refer to them in two categories. Uh, the first big spenders I refer to are those in Congress, and all you have to do is check their voting records. The second big spenders are those in the agencies who love to build empires. And, of course, the more money you can get for your little project to spend, the bigger an empire you can build. Well, one of the criticisms <coughs> leveled at you Republicans who want to cut <coughs> expenditures is this. Now you have Mr. Dulles, head of the State Department, and you have Mr. Stassen, head of, uh, of the Mutual Security Administration. And the criticism is that you are treating those two gentlemen who are Republicans just in the same manner that you treated Atchison when he was Secretary of State. Is that valid? Well, as a matter of fact, I don't think it's true. Our own committee has been working in close cooperation with Mr. Dulles, Mr. Don Lowry, and uh, Beetle Smith. As a matter of fact, uh, in Washington, we really haven't had enough of a chance to take a look at Mr. Dulles and Mr. Stassen since they took office to know exactly what we do. Well, think. briefly, sir, and as a final question, uh, from your studies so far, do you honestly believe that you can cut exp government expenditures substantially without jeopardizing the national defense? I absolutely believe that there's a great confusion between dollars spent for defense and planes, tanks, and guns produced. If we concentrate on the planes, tanks, and guns, instead of on the dollars alone, I think we'll make it. After all, they've had $225 billion since the end of World War II. Ridgeway testifies we have an adequate defense in Europe. Van Fleet testifies we don't have enough in Korea. Apparently, appropriating money for defense is not enough. Well, it's time we got more for our defense dollar instead of more defense well, dollars. Well, thank you, sir, for being with us this evening. The opinions that you've heard our speakers express tonight have been entirely their own. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Mr. William Bradford Huey and Mr. Hardy Burt. Our distinguished guest was the Honorable Charles B. Bronson, United States Congressman from Indiana. <laughs> This is New York, 1866, the year of the beginning of Lawn Jean, the world's most honored watch. Now, probably no person in those days could forecast the marvels to come. Bridges and tunnels to span the rivers, electric lights, subways, automobiles, the airplane, radio, television, and atomic energy. And throughout the years, Lawn Jean watches have always kept pace with the rush of progress. Longines' achievements in winning 10 World's Fair grand prizes and 28 gold medals represent a succession of successes unparalleled in watch history. And Longines' position as official watch of leading sports and contest associations throughout the world confirms the high esteem with which timing experts regard our timepieces. The Longines watches of today are the matured products of almost a century of watchmaking experience and achievement. And every Longines watch combines in masterful fashion the science of the watchmaker and the art of the jeweler. These Longines watches are beautiful, accurate, dependable, and made with such consummate skill as to promise untold years of proud service. For any important gift occasion, no other name on a watch means so much as Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company since 1866 maker of watches of the highest character. We invite you to join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evening at this same time for the Longines Chronoscope, a television journal of the important issues of the hour, broadcast on behalf of Longines, the world's most honored watch, and Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world-honored Longines. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches. For coronation coverage, the crown will go to the CBS television network.